All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna do the brakes now, and this has a hydraulic brake conversion uh, kit that has been put on it. So what I'm looking at here is the old Model A brake drum that looks to be bolted to a 40s era Ford brake drum. I'm guessing, uh, and then of course hydraulic lines have been put in, and uh, a uh, hydraulic cylinder. It looks to be from 40s vintage Ford and the same has been done on the rear wheels. It was a bit of a trick uh, with uh, because the Model A has the running boards that drop are dropped down. It was a bit of a trick getting it on the lift. I used small steel blocks here and, a, and a, the lift zone extender and then here I had to use wooden blocks on either side but I got it solid and it's of course very well worth it to have it up on a lift because it just makes for so much more efficiency when doing that undercarriage work. So that's what's next. Do the brakes. Okay, this is the right front uh, brake soft line here, and I. Uh, th this is some of the little challenges of, of the work here. Uh, on this end, this uh, brake line and this wheel cylinder in here are, are, are basically a matched pair because I ordered this whole thing as a kit and they all came together in a box. But what I noticed was this line end and this wheel cylinder end, the, where they couple together, they're both females. Now it will, they'll screw together, they'll screw in together. But the thing is, is that uh, inside they they both have uh, female um, mating ends. So what I've done is I've used a copper washer here and uh, the, as my way to seal this thing and hopefully that's going to work. I have pressure tested it and it doesn't leak so I think I'm okay there. Now on this other end, this fitting that goes into the frame, uh, it uh, not exactly stock and didn't want to fit tight. And it has to fit, it's very important that that fits tight because over here is the hard line. You can see the new hard line that I've run. And while this line can move, this line mustn't be able to move because it's rigid. And if, if this is moving, then this is going to move. And sooner or later, it's going to start to leak at some of its junctions because it's not made to move. So this has to be 
tight. So I resolved that problem by putting a clip on both sides. Now there's a there's this just happens to come through where there's a cross member here, so it's very tight up in there, and it was a little bit on the challenging side, uh, but got that done, so we should be good there. This right rear brake was uh, missing one part, a brake retainer spring, and uh, I, what I did was I fabricated a new spring, and I didn't want to just send off for one spring, you know, wait a week for it to get here, pay $15 of shipping for one tiny little part, and I thought if I can make one quickly and efficiently, I'll do that. And uh, I looked across the street, and some guys were fixing a city truck, and they were putting uh, at a shop and they were putting a new uh, gas tank strap on and I thought hmm and I walked over there and they were just getting the old strap off, off as I walked up literally just taking it off it was like they just took it off and almost put it in my hands I had the clip in my hand and I showed it to them I said may I do you need that old strap I said I'm, I'm wanting to make a clip and I showed them the clip and held it next to the thing and we all started laughing because it was such a perfect fit and they said it's yours you can have it I walked back over here and made the clip so it worked out pretty neat I got pictures of that that I'll show So that was uh, the one part that I had to fabricate. And uh, I installed it at the wheel on the other side because that was the last one I put together. And when I installed it, it fit snug and tight. But because it's, a, it's not a factory-made piece, it's a custom-made piece, and I felt I had a little bit of liability on it being the maker, I put a tiny tack weld on it so that it could not come off. Uh, it's, uh, it, it can be taken off easily with a cold chisel, uh, um, so I, I intentionally did that so it could come off easily, but I didn't want it to come off during operation. I don't think it would anyway, but that little tiny tack weld I put on there was a little bit of insurance. Okay, she's not quite ready to take out and test on the hills yet like I spoke of in the first video. Uh, reason being is the lower radiator hose over here and the tube and the clamps are all in pretty bad shape uh, and should be replaced so I'm not out on the highway somewhere and that ends up bursting. So I need to order those. And while I'm ordering them to save on shipping, I need two new hubcaps. I've got pretty good ones on this side, but the other two are in bad shape, so I'm going to order a few hubcaps. Uh, the rear end uh, could use uh, new seals and bearings, but uh, I don't see a need for that uh, um, unless there's going to be long distance driving. I do need to speak with some old timers. I know one fellow and some other guys that uh, back in the late 80s uh, drove their Model A's from Kansas to Alaska and back, and those guys really know a lot, and I'm good friends with them, so I can talk to them and uh, ask them about I think they'll probably say that it, um, um, I got the right idea on the rear end. So that's where we are. Before I move on to cosmetics, I do want to get those little things like the hose and some other little things. I need a, uh, for the water pump shaft, needs a keeper on it, uh, a little kit they sell to keep it, the play from moving in and out on the shaft. Uh, a few other items like that to do mechanically and then I'd like to move on to the cosmetics if the customer is willing and uh, that will be uh, fun also to get her looking good. So I did take her out and drive her around the neighborhood and it was a real blast. Uh, I, I really, I just love these Model A's and I'll end this uh, video with a video of that. Here comes the stop sign. Good thing this is small town America. I got brakes, but I'm not impressed right now. I think I got it. They pop up good. They get stiff popping up, but I think I 
I gotta bleed them some more. I figured I'd have to because there's nothing, there's no uh, compared to uh, the old fashioned bleeding method. Using vacuum to suck the fluid through is fine, but you really gotta uh, finish it off the old fashioned way, which is to push it through instead of sucking it through. Anyway, it's the end of the day. It's Saturday. I just I wanted to get these brakes done and you know I I'm pretty happy with it even though I know I still need to bleed them. Here comes another soft sign. You know, and then if she tries to roll back and I break, she stops too, but uh, she just probably a little air in there yet. This is a blast though, I'm having fun. I'm having to do everything one-handed because I'm holding this camera, but that's okay. Runs good. Sure is fun to drive. That third, I really don't need that in town, really. Oh, I'll just, what the heck, I'll go up here to the stop sign and I'll run down the main drag of town once. I see my camera is about out of battery. It's reading no battery left, so hopefully I'll... I won't run out before I get back to shop. Well, hey, the brakes are getting better. I like that. I think I better pull this. I better put this camera down. There. That ain't too bad. Well, that was fun. I, I the brakes need to be. I'm gonna turn this off. The brakes need to be bled, uh, but uh, they work well. Um, I think there's still a little air in there because it's a little cushy, which I expect that. But uh, ran good. It's just just fun all the way around. So real happy with that.